Hi everyone, I'm NipFX, but you can call me Nikolai, and today it's going to be you, me, and the first episode of the Inside Java Newscast. Here we cover recent developments in the JDK, drawing from Java enhancement proposals, design documents, the mailing list, and the occasional chicken bone. Today we're covering the recent weeks up to today, March 23rd, 2021. We have two larger topics, the release of Java 17 and the first few proposals aimed at Java 17. We'll go all the way from language features to API and tooling to deprecations, ports, performance, security. Uh, for the part on Java 17 and the upcoming JEPs, keep in mind that we're discussing proposals. So none of this is decided and everything can still change. And please take a look at the relevant links in the description down below, there's a lot of them, before making up your mind on any of these. With all of that out of the way, let's dive right in. The biggest news is of course the release of Java 16 last week. And no way can I explain all the features in detail, let alone the myriad of bug fixes, but I can give you a brief intro to most of the additions with lots of links in the description so you can follow up on what you find most interesting. So here we go, Java 16. Let's start with language features. The new records are data-centric types that don't need encapsulation. You declare so-called components in parentheses behind the class name and the compiler will create a final field and accessor for each as well as a constructor, equals, hash code and two string methods that use all of these components. If you don't want to change any of the default behaviors, you can get away with the complete record definition that fits into one line. With type pattern matching, you can check whether a variable is of a certain type and, if so, create a new variable of that type so you can use it without casting. All you need to do is append the new variable's name right after the instance of check. Sealed classes, which are in their second preview in Java 16, give you a fine-grained way to manage inheritance between Java's default free-for-all and the very restrictive final keyword, and I'm leaving out some shenanigans that you can do with package-visible constructors to get in between. When declaring a sealed class or a sealed interface, you must list all the types that can directly extend it. The compiler will then make sure that no other type does the same. Now we're coming to API additions. The stream API, for example, was extended with two new methods. One, mapMulti, is essentially a more imperative flat map for very specific situations. The other one, toList, can replace the more verbose collect to list and can potentially be faster wherever you can live with the stream's results ending up in a list that's null tolerant and shallowly immutable or unmodifiable. The HTTP2 API also gets two additions. First, if you have an HTTP request and want to create a similar one, you can now clone it to a new builder with a new overload for HTTP request new builder and then edit that builder before you build a new request. Second, if you have several buddy publishers whose output you just want to concatenate, the new buddy publishers concat is there for you. Next up, the server socket channel and socket channel classes can now use Unix domain sockets, which are faster and safer than the TCP IP stack yet limited to connections on the same host. This works on Linux and Mac and, despite their name, Windows 10 and Windows Server 2019. Now we come to a 3 for 1, because that's how many APIs Project Panama currently has in incubation. First, the Foreign Memory Access API lets you operate on, well, foreign memory, meaning native, persistent and managed heap memory. Second, the Foreign Linker API builds on that and wants to replace JNI with a better, pure Java variant. Uh, somewhat unrelated, third, the Vector API unlocks SIMD programming in Java with vector computations that reliably compile at runtime to optimal vector hardware instructions on supported CPU architectures. Once again, switching gears, we're now coming to tooling. It is now possible to stream Java flight recorder events over JMX. That means a remote streaming connection from the server which runs the app to the client which runs the JFR tool writes the same kind of file as an app on the client would. So existing JFR tools which operate on this kind of files require little change. Uh, speaking of JFR, the profiling and diagnostics tool uh, JDK Mission Control uses it extensively and its newest version 8 was just released in February. A new tool is JPackage, which just came out of incubation. With JPackage, you can create platform-specific packages that can then be installed as is common for each operating system. For example, with a package manager on Linux systems or by double clicking it on Windows. As for packaging formats, it supports DEP and RPM on Linux, PKG and DMG on macOS, and MSI and EXE on Windows. 
And then there's performance. As with each Java version, 16 ships with a lot of performance improvements. Hotspot, Perl GC, G1, ZGC, Shenandoah, they all got better. If you're in the cloud, more performance equals fewer costs. So if nothing else, maybe this can convince your CTO to finally let you get past Java 11. And as with performance, security improves as well. From cryptographic algorithms like SHA-3 and new certificate authorities to improved JAR signing, there's a number of additions. And removals are always part of the security story as well. And so root certificates with 1024 bit keys have been removed and TLS 1.0 and 1.1 are now disabled by default. There's a bit more on performance and security, follow up in the links in the description. This is a quick one, there are two new ports. The JDK codebase now supports Windows on ARM64 as well as Alpine Linux. Last but not least, there are two new important deprecations slash limitations. First, in preparation for Project Valhalla's primitive objects, the primitive wrapper constructors are deprecated for removal and synchronizing on primitive wrappers yields warnings. Second, the module system now strongly encapsulate internals for code on the class path which means illegal access deny now becomes the default. That means without further configuration, the module system will no longer allow code from the class path to access JDK internal APIs. Keep in mind that this doesn't impact the use of the infamous SunMisk unsafe because for the time being, it is actually exported by module, which is called JDK unsupported. So don't rely on that, unless you have to but try not to. And that's most of Java 16, one of the larger recent releases. Records are of course the big star, but I gotta say, I really like the first step toward pattern matching and stream to list a very welcome and seemingly straightforward addition with a surprisingly tricky history. I'm curious to hear about your favorite feature in the comments. With Java 16 out the door, what's next? Java 17, of course. Two Java enhancement proposals are already targeted for the upcoming release in September, and there's a fair chance that a third one will be soon. Let's go over the list. The first is a quick one. Following the Windows ARM64 port in Java 16, JET391 proposes to make JDK 17 run on macOS on ARM64. The second one takes a step further towards the inevitable. After all browser vendors dropped support for Java plugins, or are at least planning to, and Java 9 deprecated the applet API, the next step is to mark it for removal. This is done by JEP398 and means the API can be actually removed in any version after 17. Then there's a draft JEP that aims to finalize sealed classes in Java 17. While it's not formally targeted at the upcoming version yet, it said it proposes to finalize sealed classes in JDK 17, we'll follow that closely in the coming months. Wow, I just threw a lot of references at you. With Java 16 just out and a number of new jabs proposed in its aftermath, that's somewhat unavoidable, but not what the show is all about. When I see you again in two weeks, there's probably a bit less going on, so we can take some time to look at a few things in more detail. If there's something specific you'd like to get more insight on, let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do. And that's it for today on the Inside Java Newscast. I see you again in two weeks.